So when I got up today in beautiful San Diego, California, while my wife is in Milwaukee visiting family, I thought, what could I do today on this 70 degree day, a uh, couple hundred feet from the Pacific Ocean here, that would uh, really be fun. And I decided that that would be to sanitize my freshwater system. Now, what I've got here simulated quickly so we can get started is the order in which water comes into my rig. On the outside, I have the hose bib that goes through a pressure regulator that regulates my pressure to about between 40 and 45. And the first thing that I go through is a uh, clear source water filter setup that we'll see once I get outside. In that, and it's got two canisters. The first filter it encounters is a five micron. This is kind of the big chunk filter uh, to kind of protect the rest of the filters down the pike. That one would be replaced with more frequency. This is the first time I'm actually going to be using this. I'm switching to a 2 micron filter for the next one in line. Traditionally, the 0.5 was the next one in line. And then I would have either some nonsensical 10 micron or something that would be on my rig. So this is actually the first time I'm going to be trying this setup where I go 5 micron, 2 micron, then I go through my, I'm sorry, this is a little embarrassing, but uh, this is my uh, representation of my on-the-go water uh, softener. We'll put this right here as a little bit less embarrassing. Then after my on-the-go water uh, softener, then I go to the rig, which has on board a canister. So I got to put something in the canister. So this is where my 0.5 micron block filter is. Then the water that we drink goes through our refrigerator, which has a uh, number four Whirlpool uh, refrigerator filter, which then we sometimes, or most times, pour into our Brita. And then when I put it into my coffee maker, I have this little charcoal filter in my coffee maker. So I got to tell you that in the 20 months that we've been RVing so far, We've pretty much not had to spend a fortune buying bottled water and all of the um, nonsense that goes involved with that. Um, the water softener does require some maintenance. I probably am going to try to uh, do some video on that today. It's a fairly straightforward process. You put uh, two... Um, jugs of this table salt in periodically, periodically being, uh, and it depends on the hardness of the water, but it's turning out to be about, uh, about three months. Every three months I have to do it. And it's maybe an hour job because you have to fool around with back washing and thing. Probably the biggest problem is getting rid of the water. So because I'm going to be sanitizing the water, the first thing that I want to do is I want to make some water here, put it in my, uh, coffee maker, put some water in some jugs and things because for a couple days the water is going to be chlorine-ish. We of course want to take any filters out in our system that we might want to be reusing, take them out for a while to get the chlorine through, otherwise you're just going to chlorine saturate that filter and then you're going to be tasting it. Uh, so for instance, if I had just put in a new filter, these are very expensive for the refrigerator, I would probably take that filter out then and uh, and then reuse it. This filter that I'm going to take out, once I take it out, I'm going to toss it because I'm at the six months point for that. Every one of these has got a kind of a different life set it, to it and you can believe the ratings and you can also see how your water pressure goes and you will probably find that the first one in the system and possibly even in the, the second one in the system you're going to be replacing uh, the most. Let's get going. Okay, now one of the things you're going to want to do before you start your process of 
uh, sanitizing, you want to make sure that you're not going to get your next couple of batches of ice cubes mixed up with the ice cubes that are in there right now. So you essentially want to throw away all of the ice cubes that you may have at this time. So I will turn the ice maker off. There's a switch in the back and I will put this tray back in. And that should be all set. The next thing we're gonna do on the other side of the refrigerator is we're gonna take the filter out. And we're gonna leave it out during the process of sanitizing. You'll see that the last time I changed it was July 9th, 2018. Don't ask me how I know that, I just kind of remember it. You can see that as I described, I have a fancy adjustable water pressure meter here that I adjust to the proper 40 PSI. Then I go through a Y connector because I have a flush system for my black tank and I've uh, standardized on all zero G hoses because they're just awesome. This is what we're flushing, this on the go water softener here. I first have to empty the water out of it because it needs room for the salt. One of the things I wanna show you is that when you first take this cap off, to start your process to put this salt inside here, you'll notice that when you open this, you can actually see the orange resin that you wanna make certain you don't unintentionally dump out of your softener. This is what I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I drain the water so I have room for my salt, so I don't wanna be, uh, you know, use too much of the room up, but I basically want to, as gently as I can, just dribble the water down to preserve that resin, and you can see how easy that was. This is actually how easy it is to put the salt in. You literally just try to stay on center. One thing that I do want to point out on this on-the-go water softener is this bogus design here with these lanyards on each side. Now you'll see that I have three of them on there. I thought, well, okay, I'll I'll contact them and must be a design defect and they got it all figured out by now. But something about it, I think the postage was so much. I said, well, why don't you send me two? Send me a free replacement that you're gonna give me and then let me buy one. Well, when they came, I saw they were exactly the same design and in fact, the way they're uh, cut to provide that loop, they were even in poorer shape than the original equipment one, which is this. So what I ended up doing is I put all three of them on there and now the load is less per rope and I'm thinking it's gonna last longer. I picked up on this tip by somebody on IRV2 that talked about how they dropped this on their ankle. So in the instructions, they talked about setting the water flow such that the stream was about the size of a pencil or your pinky and that it was just clearing the rig. I'm gonna set my timer on half an hour. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on some filters. So, I'll show you how easy these come off. You got this little wrench, go up to the top and spin her off. It's a really big O-ring that's on here. Uh, haven't had any leaks so far. You can see that it's not that dark and the first one gets real dark, kind of a uh, rust color. 
So that's where I'm going to put the uh, bleach in. All right, we're going to take the other one off and see what that one looks like. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. All right, that one comes off. That one don't look all that bad either. I don't care what it looks like. I want safe water, and more importantly, I want my wife to think it's safe because she's the boss. And if she decides we're drinking bottled water, we're drinking bottled water. I've went ahead and used my Clorox bleach and did a calculation based on 105 gallon fresh water and I should use 2.625 cups in there. And in my write-up that I saved for, for my future records and for the next owner of the coach, I put down that you should put uh, three cups of bleach in there. I do want to show you something here. One of the RVers that I ran into who actually worked at a water systems operation, he told me after probably eight months of RVing that I should switch to quick disconnects on everything. And I in fact did. And this particular one here, I was able to find on the internet and it was the same style he had. So one of the handier pieces of equipment that I have is this timer. And this timer here is one that I really had a tough time finding on the internet. And it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. The reason I wanted this is that there's many times where I have a water hose hooked up to my black tank. And I know from experience that depending upon the pressure that's going in there, at about the 24 to 25 minute mark, I am filling my black and it's going to be shooting out the top. Now I've never did the Robin Williams reenactment yet, but I've come close a couple times and this is what has really helped me. This timer here is wonderful because I'll set it for like 22 minutes and I'll wear it and it doesn't matter what I'm doing as long as I don't bump it and turn it off. It vibrates, it flashes, and it beeps. And my hearing is bad enough that there's a lot of frequencies that I literally don't hear when they beep. So uh, that's the great thing about it. It it's hits all of the senses and it, it's a countdown timer. That's important. I can put in the time that I know and it'll count down. Last filter that we have to take off is the house filter. And if you did not have a outer filter setup like I have and you would want to introduce bleach to the system, you can either use your uh, winterizing hose setup here or probably the easiest way because you got to take this filter off anyways is to just put it in there and it'll go right in. Not bad. And that's when you want to replace it. You don't want to wait till it's bad because that means you've been drinking it in the process. I bought these pads and these pads actually are fairly cheap and they're made for hunters that are sitting in tree stands. But the last thing you want to do is make sure that your water is off make sure you're not under any pressure and you want to sanitize everything from here all the way through. Last minute I will pour this in there, put this back on. I checked all my fittings. I touched them and rotated them to make sure they're all connected. I'm going to go inside here shortly and I'm going to hit that valve to start filling my tank with water that's got the uh, bleach in it. I've turned the water on here. Remember this is where we introduced the last half a cup of bleach. Coming down through these two filters, remember there's no filters in them, but it's sanitizing the canisters and the piping. And right now the water is not going through the city connection it's 
going through the mode of the fresh water fill right here. What I like about my setup here is if I look in the back underneath here, I can see how my water is filling. So when I get to the full point, I can start slowing down. And I typically will fill it only to the point where that top pipe is connected to the tank because I've found that if I go too much past that, it starts spilling out the overflow, which is on the other side of the coach. When I was done filling the tanks, I ended up putting the filters back in each of the canisters of the clear source system. And I also hooked up the water softener and I turned my city pressure on because in fact, I'm going to be letting the uh, bleach water kind of sit in the 105 gallon tank to cook away and do its magic that it's going to be uh, doing sanitizing the system. So, but yet today we have dishes to be washed and, you know, showers to take and toilets to flush. So I didn't want to leave the filters out and possibly send some debris through the little uh, screens and things that are in all of my faucets. Tomorrow, we'll be running the water through all the different faucets and all the different uh, pieces of equipment I have. So tomorrow, once the pump is on, I will run a fair amount of water. I will then turn the ice maker on. Uh, I will be going and doing this faucet. Through the whole process, it might look like it's a big deal and it's a big torturous project that you have to do all the time. But quite honestly, I think I've only done this four times total, this being the fourth. And I was confident enough after the four times to be able to fool around with a camera and still get the job done. Um, I did edit out a couple of times when I stumbled over some pipes and I hit my head a couple of times, but nobody's ever going to know because nobody's ever going to see it. And I'm expecting you to forget what you just heard. You know, uh, RV life is really fun and relaxing and we have so many things that we don't have to do anymore that we had to do that when you do have to take care of some issues like this, it's it's actually like one notch below fun because as long as you plan it and it's not a fire drill an emergency and you have all the right equipment and you think about it a little bit before you do it and maybe even take some notes on things that you did wrong the last time it gets easier and easier and you can't beat that with a stick okay we'll see you next time on the next time i come up with some tips see ya